Are we really about to start talking about the team's calendar? Yes, we are. But bear with me here. There are features that we have been asking for that are now coming to Teams, and the last one is more useful than you might originally think. Let's start by looking at how to turn on the new calendar experience. In the upper right-hand corner of the screen, you will see a new calendar toggle button. Switch this to the on position, and now your calendar looks very similar to what you would see in Outlook. When you open an existing meeting, the details are also very similar, including the ribbon at the top of the screen that is the same as Outlook on the web or the new desktop experience. Towards the bottom of the screen, you now have meeting insights, and this is going to try to suggest emails and files that might be related to the selected meeting. Now, there are a couple of differences here. The first thing is, in a Teams meeting, you will see this option to add an agenda. And what this does is it adds a loop component that's pre-formatted to capture some checklist items, meeting notes, and follow-up tasks. When you create a meeting in Outlook, this is not immediately available. Let's go ahead and close that existing meeting and let's look at creating an event on the new calendar. In the upper right hand corner, you have the new event button or you can select a time on your calendar like you normally would. The dialog box opens and if you've used Outlook before, this should be very familiar. Here is where I want to point out a second difference. The new calendar in Teams is following the Outlook settings. The reason this is important to know is in many cases, your Outlook meetings are set to be in person by default, where in the traditional Teams, we're used to having the meetings online by default. So what this means in practical terms is if you forget to look for this toggle button, you might intend to start an online meeting and nobody will have that join button on their calendar. So just remember to toggle that button on. Now, I know a lot of people work in environments where they have most of their meetings online because they're either part of a remote work schedule or their colleagues are in different time zones. It may be easier in those circumstances to update your settings by going to the toolbar at the top of the calendar, clicking on the three dots for more options, and then select calendar settings. From there, we're going to select events and invitation in the calendar settings dialog box. At the top, you will see a checkbox for add online meeting to all meetings. And then you can click save to accept those changes. The next time you go to create a new event, all you need to do is add one person to the invite attendees line and the toggle button will automatically turn itself on. Now let's take a look at some of the other cool updates that have come with this new calendar. And I'd like to draw your attention to the left side of the screen. One of the things that many of us have been asking for for a long time is the option to track multiple calendars and teams. I don't know if you noticed so far in this video, but some of these meetings are my calendar and these ones marked as busy are actually Adele's calendar. Right now in the available calendars list, you're only seeing the ones that I've selected. But if I click on show all, you can see that I have the option to track Nestor and some additional groups. The one option that we are missing in Teams is the ability to add additional calendars to track. You do still have to add those calendars in Outlook. So let's quickly switch over there. And when you're in Outlook, you can select add to calendar. And I want to track an additional coworker. So I'm gonna add from directory. In the please select an account to search from, I'm just gonna add my email address. That's the only option for most people. And then I can just find my colleague. In this case, I want to track Alex. And I can choose if I want to add it to my calendars, other calendars, or people's calendars. So I'm going to add it to people and then click add. 
And then I'll close the floating dialog box and notice that Alex is now here under the people's calendar. If you happen to be using the Teams web app, the update is going to feed over almost instantly. If you happen to be using the Teams desktop app, it can take quite a long time for the update to appear, but you can force the change to happen faster by logging out of the Teams desktop app and then logging back in. And now you see that Alex is here on my Teams calendar. Now I want to draw your attention to the toolbar at the top of the screen so that we can look at some more options. When you click the drop down, you have the choice to switch it to the day view and you can choose how many days you want to view, work week, month, which I tend to use quite a bit when I'm scheduling my long-term projects. When we go back to the day, work, or week view, you can change the time scale. The default is 30 minutes, but you can select one of these pre-formatted choices. But here's the thing that's really different. Once you have your preferred view set up, you don't have to go through all the clicks each and every time. You can save a view. Notice that I have a couple already that I created while I was testing these features, but the first time you come in, all you'll see is save current view. When you click on this, a dialog box will pop up and you'll enter a name for the view and then click save. That's all you have to do. If you decide you no longer want a view that you've created, go back to save views and then select the arrow next to the one that you don't want and simply click delete. Then click delete again to confirm the action. And now that view is gone. Another option we have to temporarily change the view of the calendar is to use filters. By default, everything is checked, meaning you're seeing all possible variations of appointments and meetings on your calendar. If you deselect an item, let's say appointments, it's going to remove everything that's considered an appointment. And now all I'm seeing are meetings. When you want all of your information back, you can either put a check mark in the box or select clear filters. The next thing I wanna point out is in the date boxes at the top of the calendar, you might see an icon with a house indicating that you are working remotely or with an office building indicating that you are physically present in the office. If you're not seeing anything, this means you haven't set it up yet. To do that, you can go to the three dots for more options, choose calendar settings, and then choose work hours and location. From here, you can select the dates that you are normally in the office. In my case, that would be Monday through Friday. The times that you are normally in the office, if you have never set this up before, they will all say no location. To update your remote versus office choices, you would click in the drop down box and make the choice that is appropriate for your schedule. This information is also used in scheduling assistant and find time. So it becomes even more useful if everybody on your team is updating their schedule. Let's take a look at a quick example. I'm going to pretend to create a meeting with Adele and the original date and time that I selected is no good because she is not available. So find time is making some suggestions based on when both of us are free. Now I want you to notice that this is a Teams meeting. So it's proposing some times on Wednesday. If I turn the Teams meeting off and turn the in-person event on, you'll notice that the date and the times change. The reason that's happening is I'm asking for an in-person event and Adele is not available on Wednesday, but she is available on Thursday. So if your schedule is fairly consistent, I do suggest using the work location and hours. Now I can hear some of you thinking, well, what if my schedule changes every once in a while, three weeks from now on a Thursday, I'm not going to be in the office. You can change a specific date without changing the entire schedule. For example, let's say I'm not going to be in the office on Thursday the 13th. 
If I click on the little office building icon, a box will pop out and I can use the drop down to change it from office to remote or set out of office. In this case, we're just gonna say I'm remote. And there you go, I've updated just that one date without impacting my entire schedule. Now that we've looked at a lot of the different options, let's say you just don't like this new calendar and you want the old calendar back. As of the time this video is recorded, you have the option to toggle the calendar off. Microsoft is gonna ask for some feedback about why you're toggling it off, but you can skip giving feedback and it will revert to the classic view. So tell me in the comments below, what are your thoughts on the new calendar? And that's all for now. I'll see you in the next video.